What's going on guys? Nate Hale here with the Rapscallion Brigade and I thought we would do another uh, Rapscallion Randoms today and I guess all the time there's things going on that kind of pique my interest in the gaming industry but uh, this was one that I was interested in I, I guess maybe more than the uh, EA shutting down visceral games and all the things going on with the Star Wars license and things I would like to see versus things that are actually being done with that license and uh, this story was uh, a little bit closer to to my heart anyway because of the fact that I love Titanfall 2 so much and it really it bothered me that it was such a good game but it didn't sell any better than it did and we're gonna look at some things today this could take a little while but we're just gonna kinda ramble on and uh, see what we find I've, I've got a few articles that uh, I wanted to look at with you and and we can have a discussion you know make some uh, make some points in the comments if, these, if you think this is a good idea uh, tell us if you think it's the worst idea ever tell us and uh, just let us know what you think and uh, let's just get right into it the Titanfall developer to be acquired by EA for four hundred and fifty five million dollars um, this is an article by Jack Gardner I want to make sure we mention the people that uh, that wrote these that we're reading and uh, of course this is an article on the uh, Extra Life community Electronic Arts has announced that they are in the process of acquiring Respawn Entertainment in exchange for three hundred and fifteen million in cash and stock with a bonus of 140 million if respawn meets certain conditions we'll talk about those again uh, a little bit more in just a little bit he says to be more specific respawn agreed to a buyout of 151 million dollars in cash 164 million in long-term stock grants and the incentive targets that could bring in an additional hundred and forty million dollars that's almost half a billion dollars he said for an independent studio uh, helmed by one of the creators of of Call of Duty and he says this deal means that Titanfall would join the roster of EA tent poles alongside the likes of Battlefield and uh, the Battlefront franchise and uh, since EA has been granted the rights to develop Star Wars titles by Disney EA revealed that Respawn would be working on an original game set within the Star Wars universe. Now, we could talk uh, for a long time about what was going on with the Star Wars game that Visceral was developing. And just in the short, the short screenshots and video snippets that I saw of that game, it looked like it was going to be pretty awesome and it was a heartbreaking thing to see them just kind of trash that but uh, yeah, I have no way of knowing uh, all I can say is what it looked like or what I thought it might have been we said before that the idea of a Star Wars game that was designed to be somewhat like an uncharted game was an awesome idea maybe it just wasn't working out it was in development for a long time and still wasn't finished and you know they decided to do what they did with it I guess we'll never know what was gonna be uh, what was gonna become of that game but uh, like I said all we can say is that it was looking like it was gonna be awesome but you know we don't know I, it's easy for me to sit here and 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 play armchair quarterback with these multi-million dollar deals and with as much money as goes into developing a game these days um, you know, I, I'm, it's kind of above my pay grade to, to talk about what a, what a multi-billion dollar company should do with their intellectual properties or with their employees. But, uh, you know, we just kind of comment from the outside looking in, but these, uh, these, uh, incentive targets that respawn is going to be, uh, maybe able to get. Uh, that's interesting to me that uh, 
Uh, I'm sure that it's things like if the if the game gets certain scores or if it meets certain sales goals. And truthfully, I believe that Titanfall 3 will be an amazing game if Respawn is allowed to develop the game they want to develop. If EA doesn't come in and say, look, this, this is what you have to do. You have to put in these, these various methods of, of making money, put loot boxes in. It has to have this certain style of online uh, play or, or whatever that, that it is that, that sometimes developers don't want to put microtransactions in a game. They just want to make a game and let it be out there. But microtransactions seems to be the new hotness with all of the, the publishers. So as long as Respawn can keep the the suits out of their business when they make t Titanfall 3, I think it would be a great game. While the acquisition of Respawn, it says, we're right here if you're following along, while the acquisition of Respawn might come as a bit of a shock to some, the deal merely solidifies the working relationship EA and Respawn had for the past several years. Talking with VentureBeat, Respawn co-founder and CEO Vint Zampella said, Respawn and EA have worked together a long time from the inception of the studio. An acquisition has come up from time to time. Uh, the question was where we are in the industry. How do we take the next step in making bigger, better games? We see the need for bigger resources to make bigger games. Now that's true. Games are more and more expensive and I can see how it would be very difficult for uh, an independent studio to continually come up with the resources to create these games and to keep making them bigger and better. But the truth is, now we're going to get into this a little bit. The truth is that if sales of Titanfall 2 had been a little better, maybe they wouldn't be in a position where they needed some help coming up with those resources. Um, and so this next paragraph is something that I immediately thought about. And uh, at the time, last year, it didn't make any sense, Titanfall 2's launch date. Uh, placing it right between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Um, basically burying the lead there and taking away what, what could have been an amazing uh, sales period for Titanfall 2 if they had chosen to release it at a different time. It just didn't make any sense to me. Why would you, why would you put it right there in between two of the biggest releases uh, of that, that year? And uh, at the time, I thought, I, I don't know why they would do that. But seeing this, seeing what's happened now, it does make me think, and I said this yesterday, it makes more sense to believe that EA intentionally tanked the sales of Titanfall 2 to put Respawn in a position where they might need to be acquired so that EA could go ahead and swoop in and get them that makes more sense than to think that somebody who does this for a living thought it would be a good idea to release it during that time period. He says right here under the picture, there has been some speculation that EA has been angled towards this studio purchase for quite some time. Titanfall sold relatively well, but Titanfall 2 underperformed despite receiving critical acclaim. One of the deciding factors in sales that, have many, that many have pointed to was that EA, Titanfall 2's publisher, chose to release Titanfall 2 one week after the release of their other heavily marketed title, Battlefield 1. That could certainly have put Respawn in a tough place, making it easier to bring the company into the fold, which is what I said. Before reading any articles about it, before watching any videos about it, but my first thought was just that. And I would imagine that that's many people's uh, first thought. And he says here, that tactic wouldn't be out of the question. Of course it wouldn't. Um, I was trying to look up some things about Titanfall 2's launch date last year. I found this. Um, PCGamer.com. Uh, Joe Donnelly wrote this article, like I said, November last year. Titanfall 2's launch date could not be changed, says the game producer. Why? 
That doesn't make any sense. You're you're in charge. You make the rules. Why not why not change it? Now again, that could be something there could be something that I have no clue about. Something to do with, with that aspect of the industry that it truly could not be changed or it had already been set and there were certain contracts in place that just would have been way too much to try and change. That could be the case. I, I readily admit that, that I don't know everything there is to know about the process of releasing a video game. Um, I do think that that doesn't make any sense on the face. So why, why, why couldn't you change it? Why wouldn't someone in charge of that process be able to say, you know what, we can make a lot more money if we space out these releases or if we move this release date to later in the year or early next year, maybe we could increase our profits, increase our sales. It makes more sense, like I said, that, that EA would have intentionally put it there to maybe set this opportunity up for them to purchase Respawn. He says, I would not be surprised if we look back on Titanfall 2 as one of the best shooters of its time. And that's uh, Chris of Titanfall 2 in his review. That's hardly faint uh, praise. A cursory glance at aggregate site Metacritic suggests others share his point of view. Of course, it was an amazing game. And uh, everybody I knew that had played it was trying to tell others, you got to buy this, you got to play it. But there were a lot of people that said, look, I've I bought Battlefield 1, or I'm waiting on Call of Duty. I don't have time. Titanfall 2 is a, a secondary purchase for me. Or many people say, you know, I'll, I'll wait till the price goes down a little bit. I'm playing Battlefield 1 right now. Or, like I said, the Call of Duty people jumped on Call of Duty. And both of those games are not games that you're going to play through in a few days and then go and purchase Titanfall 2. Those are games that keep you coming back with their online component. So you, you get in there early and you you build your build your character in those uh, online communities and then you, you want to be in that community that you've put the time into, that you put the work into. So nobody's going to just leave that, uh, that other game and come to Titanfall 2 uh, just on a whim like that. Uh, now, I played Titanfall 2... Uh, the single player campaign I haven't even gotten to play online because of my internet situation but uh, I bought it for the single player campaign I wanted to buy the first one but it didn't have a single player campaign and uh, and so I had to wait on the second one and besides that the second one was released on the PS4 and so I was able to get that but um, he says the fact that it's landed squarely between first person shooter juggernaut Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare may point to its faltering physical sales, you think? And as Andy pointed out yesterday, swath of comments in our reviews uh, remark specifically about being torn between Titanfall 2 and its competition from a financial stance. Um, and, and, and that's what I was saying at the time. Uh, I wanted to play Titanfall 2. I chose it over Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty. Uh, I was in the same situation. I, I didn't have $180 or more to spend on three games at once, or even the 120 to buy two games, or if you go into buying season passes and things like that, even more money. I didn't have that much money, so I chose Titanfall 2, and it was an amazing game, and I still love it. But uh, he makes a good point there. There were so many people saying, look, I, I went ahead and and purchased Bat Battlefield, or I purchased Call of Duty. And then, like he says, there's other games coming out uh, very soon after that. Dishonored 2, Watch Dogs 2. And, uh, and so Titanfall 2 seemed to completely slip past most people's, uh, most people's radar. The big question, then, he says, is why launch Titanfall 2 now? It seems ludicrous that it's being compared to this year's war-torn installments, given their vast differences. Therefore, could it perhaps have slipped into next year? Apparently not, so says the game's producer. Now, look at this. Speaking to PlayStation Lifestyle, Respawn's Drew McCoy said that although he wasn't sure who came up with the prescribed launch date, there was no room for maneuver, and that he doesn't tend to think about the other games around release. I actually don't know, he says, where the decision came from. I just know it was locked in a long time ago and there was no changing it. But why? He says, I'm not really worried about it. 
we tried not to worry, really. We, you know, when you care, he says, about what other games are doing, when they're releasing, you worry. At the end of the day, we're releasing a game that we're happy with and we enjoy playing, that we're proud of. As long as we're doing that, I think we're going to find an audience. It doesn't really matter when it comes out. A good game gets noticed. And that's true to a certain extent. To a certain degree, that is, that is true. But this is a great game that didn't get noticed by as many people as it should have because of all the things that were coming out at once. And I understand a part of the problem is how much money we're having to spend on games these days. And a big part of it, too, is that, that I mentioned earlier, that when you, when you buy one of these games, whether it's Titanfall 2, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Call of Duty World War II this year, uh, Battlefield 1, Destiny. Uh, you know, I have a friend who plays Destiny exclusively. I, I don't even know if he plays any other video games. He played Destiny. And then when Destiny 2 came out, he bought Destiny 2, and now he plays Destiny 2. That's all he plays. Because of the way the game is designed, it's, uh, it's almost a platform unto itself. And so he's so invested in that game, he doesn't have time or money to pump, uh, pump any cash into or time into other games. He's, he's focusing on the game that he enjoys and that he's built a character up in. And the same is true with any of these games. If you get in early and you start uh, gaining experience and you get the perks and you, you've built a, built a character, you've built a reputation in the online community in any of these games, uh, you're not going to jump ship and go to a game that, that you're just starting. And so most of the time you're going to stick with the, the game that you bought. And Titanfall 2 kind of fell victim to that. Not a lot of people bought it because they were looking at those larger releases. But when it comes down to affordability, it's not always that simple. While clearly impressed with Titanfall 2, Chris also worries we'll remember it as an underground favorite rather than the hit it deserves to be. Time will tell whether or not this proves to be the case. Like I said, it was an amazing game, and uh, it just didn't get the attention that it should have, maybe. And there are a lot of people that that never got to see how great it was because they were playing other things and that's just that's just the way it is um, there are some things a couple more articles we'll look at here EA buys Titanfall Studio Respawn and uh, this is James Brighton with Games Industry Biz now a lot of this first part here is some of the same stuff we've just looked at but there's a quote here I wanted to look at these few things. He says, We've seen firsthand the world-class caliber of Respawn as a development studio with incredible vision, deep talent, and inspiring creative mindset, said Andrew Wilson, CEO of Electronic Arts. Our longtime partnership is grounded in a shared desire to push the boundaries and deliver extraordinary and innovative new experiences for players around the world. Together, we brought this to life in the Titanfall franchise, and now, with the Respawn team joining EA, we have exciting plans to accomplish even more amazing things in the future. That's great. I agree. Respawn is an amazing developer, and if EA will allow them to create the games they want to create, and they don't force extra things into their games or or, or hem them into a, a certain style uh, of game or insert microtransactions and other things into Titanfall 3 and whatever other games that Respawn is going to be developing. I agree, this could be a great thing. Now, we still have to take into account EA's... Um, EA's habit of taking in studios and then using them up and spitting them out, and uh, that's a fact. That happens. It's true that EA is not the only studio or only uh, company that does that. Uh, we're going to look at uh, a few others in just a second. But He says, we started Respawn with the goal to create a studio with some of the best talent in the industry. I think they were successful at that. To be a top developer developer of innovative games, I think they're successful at that. Uh, 
the original Titanfall, I wanted to play it so badly, but I didn't have an Xbox One. Wasn't going to get one because, again, of my internet situation. And the fact that it was basically multiplayer only. And even the few single player things you could do, you still had to be online to do that. And uh, But just looking at videos and reading reviews of the game, I really wanted to play it. So when Titanfall 2 was announced, and they announced, number one, coming to PS4, great. Uh, number two, they said we're going to have a single player campaign in this one. Great. So I, I snatched it day one and uh, wasn't disappointed. Titanfall 2, I don't know how many times I can say it. It's an amazing game. So he said, we started to respawn with the goal to create a studio with some of the best talent in the industry. Yes, top developer, innovative games. You've accomplished that. Uh, that's Vince Zampella, CEO of Respawn. We felt that now was the time to join an industry leader that brings the resources and support we need for long-term success. And again, I understand that because games are more and more expensive to create. And uh, it, it's not a sure thing that you're going to make that money back. And that's one reason we're seeing these microtransactions popping up in AAA games. Because they are so expensive. And... I would almost rather see, maybe this is a whole other video, maybe we can make a shorter version of this, but you guys can comment on this in the in the comment section and we can discuss this too, but I would almost rather see 70 or $80 games if, that's, if it includes everything. No more microtransactions, no season passes, no more games as service trying to get you to continue to pay for the game. Uh, after the fact or an ongoing revenue stream just make your games 80 bucks a piece I mean, let's just let's go ahead and do that inflation is a thing and so it's it's normal everything else the cost of everything goes up over time and so uh, it, it's true that when adjusted for inflations we're paying when adjusted adjusted for inflation we're paying less now for games than we did years ago um, it's just that, you know, when I was a kid paying, I remember $50 games. And then I remember paying, I think it was $69.99 for Mortal Kombat 2 for the Super Nintendo uh, when it first came out. I realize that's forever ago, and some of you may not have even been born yet when that was going on. But uh, at the time, that was a lot of money for, for a game. And adjusted for inflation, it's even more than 70 bucks. But at the at that time, I paid seventy dollars for that game, and now we're back here paying fifty nine ninety nine. Uh, I believe if they would raise the the uh, the cost of the games for a, just a little bit and do away with microtransactions, I think everybody would probably be okay with that. Again, that's uh, uh, that's just a side. I, I kind of got off track there, but um, let's go back to our. Our article. He says. Well, uh, he says uh, we felt that now was the time to join an industry leader that brings the resources and support we need for long-term success, while still keeping our culture and creative freedom. While still keeping our culture and creative freedom, that is a big if. If EA will allow this to happen, EA, if you're listening, I know you're not listening. Who am I? But EA. If you will allow this to be the case, Respawn will be successful and you will be successful. You'll make a lot of money while still keeping our culture and creative freedom. Don't force them into injecting things into their games that uh, is not part of their design process or things that they really wouldn't want to do. EA, it says, has been a great partner over the years with Titanfall and Titanfall 2, and we're excited to combine our strengths. This is a great next step for Respawn, EA, and our players. Well, we'll see. Uh, I hope it is a great next step. Um, like I said, if EA will allow Respawn to do their thing, it's fine. No, no harm done. And the players uh, will reap the benefits of this this relationship that gives Respawn uh, a larger war chest to draw from to to make their games. And if EA will keep their nose out of it, then the players are going to be satisfied. I, I feel like that'll be the case. Um, and he says here, this is maybe another 
video even, the respawn acquisition is also notable since it closely follows the closure of Visceral Games, which he had been uh, which had been working on another major Star Wars game led by Amy Hennig. Um, and like we talked about, I don't know how good or bad that game was shaping up to be. Um, he says here EA dismissed the idea that the Visceral situation stemmed from the need to have more live service titles instead of single player efforts. You can dismiss the idea, but your words uh, speak for themselves when you talk about one of the reasons you were shutting it down was it was shaping up to be a single-player experience and that you were looking for a way to keep players coming back for a long time. Uh, it sounds a lot like you want Destiny Star Wars version. And so... Uh, I guess we could say Star Wars Destiny Edition. Um, so you can dismiss that idea, but that seems to be what you were looking for. And again, it, it could, if it was that the game was just not shaping up to to be a good game, and it wasn't what you had hoped it would be, and you had just spent too much time and money in development of it, and it just wasn't looking like it was going to turn out well. Why didn't you just say that? Why didn't you just say, look, the team is just not, they're just not coming up with what we thought this was going to be. And so we're just going to kind of shift, shift gears here and go in another direction. But you didn't say that. You said things that specifically led people to believe you want a games as service and not a single player campaign. And it's been mentioned that Respawn's going to be doing a Star Wars game. I hope that it's a great game. I hope that it's, uh, I hope that it's something that uh, is not, uh, requiring online something that's story based. I, uh, you know that that's a whole other topic. Story story based games, linear games versus uh, online platforms, basically. But uh, you know, with with the acquisition of the Star Wars license, EA acquired some amazing uh, stories and. They, they could be using those, and it doesn't seem like they are. And I'm, I'm looking forward to Battlefront 2. I hope that that game is going to have an amazing single-player mode. Um, but we'll see. The last article I wanted to look at, and this, is, this one kind of wraps everything up, I guess. Uh, this is uh, Forbes and uh, Eric Kane at, at Forbes. And uh, he says, why EA's respawn buyout is mostly good news for Titanfall, uh, or Titanfall fans, rather. The studio behind Titanfall 2, Respawn Entertainment, is being gobbled up by video game publisher EA in a buyout worth over $400 million, which we've already looked at that. He says, the good news is that this means EA has confidence in the developer and that a new Titanfall is on the way. That is good news. I agree with that. Uh, when... When Titanfall 2 was released, and I played it, and it was amazing, and then I looked and saw that the sales weren't that great, I was scared. I thought, man, I, that's such a shame, because I really I want another one of these games, because it's awesome. It's an awesome universe they've built, and the games are amazing, and I, I want another one. And it looked like there might not be another one if it didn't sell well. And so this is good news. He's he's speaking the truth there. This is good news that EA has the confidence in the developer that uh, it means a new Titanfall is coming. And that is a good thing. And he says that Respawn is also developing a Star Wars game. Of course, we had already noticed that. On the other hand, it's always a little disappointing to see an independent developer get bought up by a massive publisher like EA. EA is far from the worst when it comes to buying up and then shutting down developers, but this acquisition comes on the heels of the shuttering of Visceral Games and the disastrous release of Mass Effect Andromeda. Still, this could be a match made in heaven. Respawn, founded by the creators of Call of Duty, Jason West and Vince Sampella, uh, already has a strong track record as a developer. I gave Titanfall 2 a 10 out of 10, he said, calling it one of the best shooters in modern gaming. Its lackluster sales apparently didn't dissuade EA from making this acquisition, and that's excellent news. Few shooters deserve a sequel as much as Titanfall 2, and I expect big things from 3. And that's true. We should all expect big things from 3. 
Uh, like I said, as long as EA doesn't stick his nose in it and force them uh, to insert things into the game that they they may not have wanted to. Now we looked at the the part of the uh, article uh, over on Extra Life where he was talking about speculating why it is that uh, EA would have chosen the release date that they did. And like I said, my first thought when all of this went down was that did they did they release it when they did so that it wouldn't sell very well so that respawn might need the extra resources and be a little bit more willing to sell the studio to to EA and uh was that their long game was that their plan all along and that may or may not have been i don't that's just uh, that's just uh, my wheels turning in my head uh, it certainly looks like it, and we said that that would make more sense than if EA had chosen that release date thinking it was going to be a good idea for sales. But uh, according to Kotaku, he says, now th this was uh, something that caught my attention too. He said the acquisition was made after Korean publisher Nexon made a bid for the studio. Nexon publishes the Titanfall mobile game. EA outbid the competition, and the rest is history. And so that makes sense. That makes uh, that makes sense that if uh, if this other company, this Korean company Nexon, was moving in to to purchase Respawn, then uh, EA probably moved quickly to to keep them uh, close to the chest. Uh, keep them in-house and that makes sense now it could still be that EA chose that release date to maybe tank the sales a little bit so that they could eventually come around to making an offer to respawn maybe that process was sped up by the Korean publisher uh, that was trying to bid on respawn and EA went ahead and, and gobbled them up I don't know it just it looks it looks like it was planned all along, um, but it, it could be could be that this is just the way things are turning out. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that that uh, this is definitely uh, EA's master plan to to hamper a studio's success so that they could later gobble them up. But you know, if I was running the company and that was my goal, that would make sense. Uh, he says, uh, frankly. Despite whatever mistakes EA has made in the past, I'd rather see Respawn and Titanfall franchise and the Titanfall franchise as part of EA than Nexon, a company with an even worse reputation. And so I guess that's true. Uh, I don't know much about Nexon. And he goes into the specifics again of the acquisition. We've looked at that uh, already. Um, and he makes an interesting point. Um, on down here because of EA's less than stellar reputation many people often wrongly assume they are the worst offender when it comes to buying and then shutting down studios but companies like Microsoft Sony Activision THQ and 2k just to name a few have long and terrible histories of doing the exact same thing well that doesn't make it okay uh, that doesn't mean it's it's the best thing for the industry it's just one of those things that, well, it's just the way it is, right? And it's true. Uh, if you look at the, if you look at the facts, you look it up. EA is not the worst offender of this, and they're they're not the the worst company in video gaming or anything like that. But a lot of times, in any industry, when you have these big players uh, that already have the money, and they're trying to make more money. Uh, it's it's a lot easier to just buy out competition or outbid the competition uh, than it is to uh, be innovative yourself. Uh, you look at most of the uh, most of the giant companies in any industry. Uh, you look at Microsoft and Apple and others. Uh, they're going to they're going to find other smaller companies that are innovating in certain areas, and they're going to bring them into the fold. And uh, that's going to decrease or eliminate completely the opportunity for much competition.
Okay, and that, that's a, a fact of life. And video gaming, as big a deal as it is these days, as much money as is pumped into the development of games, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the major leagues. And you have some of these minor league teams that make a name for themselves, do some great things, create some good games, or come up with some innovations in the way we play games. And they find themselves being swallowed up uh, by the big boys who have all the money, and that's just that's just the way it goes. That's the nature of the industry, and um, we're probably this may be a whole other video too, but we're probably reaching a point where games are literally too expensive to develop in their current form. And we're already seeing more and more independent games popping up. The Nintendo Switch is looking like it's going to be uh, the home for most independent developers. It's the um, it's the perfect console, the perfect setup for for what most indie developers are trying to do, and it costs much less money to develop those style of games. And so there's less risk, and you get more innovation. And uh, and so that's that's probably going to be a good thing, and uh, I would I would take that, I would take the games coming back to a simpler form, uh, over just an outright video game crash, and again that's that's a whole other video, but uh, what do you think about EA acquiring Respawn? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Uh, are you looking forward to Titanfall 3? Did you get to play Titanfall 2? And if you haven't, why not? Go play it. It's a great game. But have you played that? What did you think of that game? What do you, uh, what do you think about uh, what, this, uh, what this looks like for the future of EA and Respawn? And uh, comment uh, below and let us know. And let's have a, let's have a big discussion about, uh, about this topic. I want to take you, uh, thank you for taking the time to, to listen to me ramble on about this particular topic, and uh, we'll uh, we'll try to do more of these videos moving forward. It's it's kind of fun to just uh, sit and and talk about uh, all the things going on in the industry or with different developers or games. Uh, if you really love a hobby, then you're going to either be doing it or reading about it or talking about it. And uh, that's kind of what the way we are with gaming. And so uh, join the conversation in the comments section. If there's a topic that you would uh, that you would like to see covered or that you would like for us to discuss, you can let me know in the comments or send me a message. And uh, we'll be glad to glad to get that uh, out there. Again, thanks for taking the time to listen to me ramble on, and, and we'll see you again real soon.